Hello and welcome to the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from 104.9 FM. I'm Paul Kretschmer. My guest once again today is Dr. Robert Lopez, who has been discharged by two educational institutions for speaking out on topics that should be considered by Christians, but many Christians don't want to discuss. As a Christian believer, I find that kind of behavior on the part of the school that you're speaking of to be a very discouraging, very um, troubling point, and, and, and a point where the humanity within us overtakes the spiritual nature that God has endowed us with and, and has pushed that down in order to let the, the human frailty rise up and take charge of the situation. Yes, that, that's true, although I would tell you that I feel very good. I feel very free, and um, I really, the one thing that has kept me so happy during all of this is that I had a rare opportunity that most people don't get, where I, I had the Holy Spirit with me in some of those meetings, and so few of us actually get the chance to be tested like that, you know, where they say it's either your job or your calling, and I said, I have to obey God, I can't obey you. So, you know, that was its own reward, you know, to, to know that God chose me and, and, and that I was tested that way and that I performed as well as I did. I, know, I'll be able to really hang on to that for the rest of my life. I believe I understand where you're coming from on that, and it does strike me as an encouraging place to find yourself in. Yeah, I think so. so. As far as the time that you were at the seminary then, what kind of length of, of, of time were you there then? I was there for three and a half years. Did they not understand who they were getting when they hired you? I, it seems like well, it, it seems like with your perspective that that you have very clear faith values. You have very clear values about your your conduct and all that. And it also strikes me that it must have been very difficult for you to function within a system if if it's as you have described because it's a moving target. Right. Well, I was hired by Paige Patterson. He, he was the previous president, and he was removed after a big Me Too scandal, and a new president came in. He fired a fourth of the faculty. That was the first thing he did. Mm. And he started hiring all of the people, um, a bunch of new professors that came from the institution he had come from. He brought in all new administration. They completely revamped the curriculum. They restructured everything. So it was a, com- it was a totally different seminary from the one that had hired me. Yeah, I, I can see how you, you might feel like, it, to, to use a cliche here, a fish out of water under those circumstances. I think everybody on campus is very uneasy, though. I don't think it was just me, uh, because they fired so many people, um, and there was a general climate of uneasiness and fear. Among the colleagues that you were most acquainted with and knew the best and perhaps became friends with during your time there, can you say that there are others of, of the staff or the faculty there that are still in a position where they're stepping very carefully because they don't know which way the hammer is going to fall next? I assume that that would probably describe everyone's mm. situation, but uh, there was a certain point after which I, I just didn't communicate with my colleagues. I didn't want to drag them into my mm. problems. I know that they had a lot of their own problems to, to bear. So I, I have not had heart-to-heart conversations with them about this. Yeah, that, that, that in itself seems very, again, to me at least, very disheartening when people who should be, as the saying goes, be Caligula, cannot be because everyone's watching out for themselves and it makes it very difficult mm-hmm. to, to be the kind of professional colleagues that I would, if I were in school right now, I would hope that, that the people are that are teaching me are all essentially on the same wavelength. They may have their instances of personality differences and things like that, but in many other underlying structure that that the teachings resting on, nonetheless would be able to talk with each other about those common things. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's true. So um, in the wake of all this, what what have you done to, to gain employment again then? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm open to many paths that God will throw in my way. If I can share with your listeners, uh, I, I've, I've been working on a multicultural Christian theater project. We had the first premiere of our, of our first play last December 6th, and if people want to support me in that endeavor, we're trying to bring the gospel, the gospel to uh, the whole world through stories and through plays. 
um, uh, my the address for my fundraiser is give send go dot com forward slash Robert Lopez Mission, um, and we're we're writing original screenplays um, and stage plays, and we're performing them. We we'll, we integrate a gospel message in there, but we try not to hit people over the head with the gospel because we want people to come to the show for the story and then hear the gospel. You know. Yeah, yeah. That I I think some some preachers like Chuck Swindoll would describe that as being winsome in our testimony. Yes, although winsome always gives me the chills because I was always told to be winsome by people who wanted me not to talk about sex abuse. <laughs> yeah, well, I can understand in your own particular case, of course, yeah. your w- uh, w- words do hurt, uh, unlike, yeah, yeah. Un- unlike what the old yeah. old maxim says. And some yeah. things can have a, a very unpleasant connotation yeah. because of our because of the things that we've lived yeah. through. Do you anticipate that that kind of work that you just described is something that you may be pursuing on a long term level, or is this simply something, perhaps not to diminish it in any way, but simply something that God's given you to do for the for the present, and that there may be other things coming along, either in addition to or in place of down the road? Then, well, I think that we'll, I definitely am going to need to find other things in addition to it. But I definitely hope to, st- to stick with it for the long haul. Yeah. Um, as far as as far as far um, the academic world is concerned, would you be open to being hired on to a faculty again, or is that something having been bitten twice now uh, that maybe the third time is not something that you, would, that you would want to experience once again? Well, you know, I love teaching. I really love teaching. I love research. I loved my job in both places. I loved the students in both places. I loved all the work that I did, the research, the learning. I loved going to conferences and presenting my work. Um, you know, so if, if I could find a, w- a place that would hire me, which is probably going to be almost impossible at this point, um, where I could do those things and not be dragged into these administrative battles, I would definitely do it. In ter- uh, that, that prompts a question on my part to you then, sir, which is in terms of developing administrative people for the academic f- institution, would you venture a a suggestion as to the kind of training or the kind of temperament or disposition that administrative people should have if they're going mm-hmm. to be in that atmosphere as opposed to the way people have behaved in, in the situations that you have found yourself in? I think that... Um there has to be massive restructuring in the education world. One of the reasons why the Christian education world turned out to be so toxic is because you're living in this uh, claustrophobic world. You're very aware that the liberal world will never hire you, and people will tell you that openly. They'll say, well, where are you going to go? You know, no liberal is going to touch you. So we become this backwater. Um, so a lot of this, for that to change, we're going to have to change higher education across the board. That means breaking up the the liberal higher education problems, and that and that's such a huge endeavor. I've always said the best way to do that is to just cut off the money. Once you cut off the money, then a lot of the abusive practices grow out of the wasteful practices. That is, you know, people who have money sitting around that they don't really know what to do with, they end up creating problems that then they are the reason that, the, you know, they'll, they'll fix the problems that they themselves create. That's how you get diversity offices, Title IX offices, you know, student complaint offices, all of those things. And I think that administrative overgrowth is where things go wrong because then, you know, they start interfacing with lawyers and people off campus and they start start trying to get grants for things and, and just the money really just becomes the source of corruption. I think higher education should be, it's a bare bones building. Students should live, you know, at home or in an apartment in the city, be part of the city, be part of the church, in their neighborhood and come to campus, you know, do their studies, maybe do one student activity, and then leave. Okay, thank you very much for your time, sir, and uh, God's blessings on what you seek to do uh, for his kingdom and to maintain yourself at the same time. Thank you, sir. God bless you. For further information about Dr. Robert Lopez, call us at 860-346-1049. The opinions expressed are those of the participants, not necessarily those of the staff or management of this station. I'm Paul Kretschmer on the WISS Journal, Public Affairs from WIHS, Middletown.